What's up, everybody? Welcome to Not Friday Q&A. The NAM show is happening, and I am not at NAM. and Troy Nababan right here is also not at NAM. But you went last year, didn't you? Yeah, I was there last year. Was Tell fun. us a little bit about your experiences, Troy. I uh, walked around, and that was it. How long, how long <laughs> could you take it? You know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, I fucking flew all the way to LA for it, so how bad do I think it's really going to be? But it was fun. I spent two days there, um, pretty much full days-ish, but it was fun. You didn't get um, sick? No, I don't think I got sick. Mate, immune system, clone him, because it yeah. uh, could be very handy. What we're going to do in this video is, rather than talk about guitar stuff, I get loads and loads of questions about home recording and interfaces and kind of that weird zone between, you know, it's kind of nerdy and gear-like with guitar stuff, but it's also not my wheelhouse, it's studio gear. So I've got somebody who does studio gear for a living. Troy's okay at doing what he does. So we're gonna talk about some of the more music tech oriented kind of things. We'll also talk about some guitar stuff as well. And the big one, I guess to get the ball rolling is UAD Luna, which they were hyping a lot and I said to him, boy, I bet you it'll either be amazing or it'll be like, so what? And uh, it's, it's just to, like my reaction to it is it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, so far so good. Um, I haven't, I mean, they've done like one video for it pretty much. I think they're videos. doing a live stream, like a big live stream event. Yeah, I got the emails about it. I, I, got, I woke up, my kid woke me up like 30 minutes after it was announced. So I got to see it really early this morning, first time. But yeah, it seems pretty cool. It's basically their own DAW, right? Yeah, from and what I can understand. And this is interesting because I was saying to Troy, I like all my stuff, I have a little Apollo twin and I use it all the time. Anything you ever see at my place is the Apollo twin and it's great. Like it's just a really good piece of gear. I mentioned it in my gear of the decade video and they're all thinking about Paul Gilbert back there as well. <laughs> they're not listening to what we're saying. He's just doing his thing. That's a great video by Intense the way. Intense Rock 2. So yeah, the cool, the cool thing about the UAD stuff, the Unison plugins and the console, and I was doing something the other day and I was like, oh man, imagine like one day if UAD had stuff where you could put like a virtual instrument in the console, like a drum machine. And I think they've, people have wanted that for a long time. So it's nice to finally get it. It's, um, there's some, I, I've got a Apollo Firewire one, like one of the original ones. And I, I use that not as much as I used to. We did the full Back to Zero album through that thing. It's and, pretty good. Um, and I've used it for a long time for mic preamp emulation and, and all that sort of stuff. But the thing that I wish it had was some amount of summing. And I, I don't mean that to like run your mix through for color necessarily, but when I track guitars, I like to commit. Like if I got yeah. two mics, three mics, four mics, I just want to have one track coming in Pro Tools. And it's a relatively simple thing to do. You can do it in Pro Tools obviously, but I just like to commit at the time. And I was like, man, if they just had that in the Apollo, it would make life way easier. And the fact that I got that now is like pretty cool as well as like being able to run stuff through tape. Cause I think that's a whole big part yep. of it. Um, that's something that I've considered is like, oh, let's just, you know, slap a UAD plugin on the way in record through the Studers or whatever it is, because they are really, really good tape emulations. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's obviously a workstation as well that looks really good. Yeah. The you know? DA, the door features, I haven't, um, haven't really looked at so much, but you said that the, uh, what the time stretching. Yeah. We were pretty... watching a thing where it's, it's got like Ableton style time stretching, which is pretty cool. And you know, like he had a track and it was at a. 152 or something and he just slowed it down to 148 and like immediately converted it so it looks like it looks good for that for someone like me who's a schlub when it comes to recording it's pretty nice the big thing though is it's that f word free if you've got an apollo thunderbolt on mac yep which uh which you know let's face it that's kind of a pretty specific thing but that's me so i can get this for free and use it which is Pretty, pretty cool. I can't get it for free because <laughs> I'm using the Firewire one, but that's okay. Um, I've seen so many people, like I, I read the Gear Sluts thread, uh, you know, within 30, 40 minutes of, of it being announced. Why isn't it available for PC? Um, Why doesn't well, it have a touch screen? Why doesn't it have 350 different amp models? Why doesn't it have Wi-Fi? Why can't I watch porn on it? Yeah. You know, the usual. That's, you know what? Fine, but... I'm sorry that the free product that came out doesn't suit your needs. It's fucking free. Just like deal with it. It's not good. Not everything's for everybody. Unfortunately, like a great saying someone told me, which i live my life by is the surest way to piss everybody off is to try to keep everybody happy. So 
you know, they're just going to keep that very specific part of the market happy and which good is, on them. Which is a bit, a pretty bit. Like I'm all Mac here. I mean, it's yeah. every every computer that I've owned for the last oh, 10 years. Uh, yeah, 10 years now has been Mac. So, you know, there's going to be some PC people that are pretty shitty about it, but I'm sure they'll expand it at some point, you know? Like these if, things, if it goes well on, this has been like what UAD's done for years. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure even the um, Apollo Twin that you've got that came out as a FireWire device or Thunderbolt straight away, and you can get Thunderbolt on PC. Yeah, and now you can get and it's USB. All so the like, just give them some time. Like it's they can't have everything ready for launch. Do you think that's because it's a relatively stable, reliable? Like it's Thunderbolt, it's Mac. They yeah. know what they're getting. They can launch the product and you know iron out all the the bugs. In I it. think it's pretty consistent with UAD stuff. Like it comes out and it generally works. I could be I, I've jumped on stuff maybe not on launch, so I, I could be wrong on that. But I I, I think by reputation UAD is a, a solid brand. Yeah, like you don't expect them to release stuff stuff and have it be like massively buggy, and like maybe some other companies that we might get to on this list that yeah. I'm also excited about their products, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, just let him let him see how it goes. So speaking of doors, uh, Pro Tools 2020, and we were putting this together, and I was reading through the specs, and the first thing I said was, because again, I'm an idiot. Oh yeah, folders. What's that? And he went, oh yeah. So Pro Tools 2020, I I did a very short look, and all it, I think they all I said for it right was the folders thing. That's they've that's pretty much the only feature they mentioned. That's the selling point. Which. I, I remember hearing that as a rumor like two years ago, three years ago, uh, maybe not three years ago, two years ago. And I, I do really big sessions a lot of, in, in a lot of what I do. And it might be, I, I, I'm not as like, you know, I don't care about as much anymore. I'm not trying to like prove a point where I might- You got nothing like, to prove. Yeah. There was a time where it was like, every track's got to have 70 tracks of vocals on it. Yeah. And you know, 25 mics on the drum kit and stuff. Ragdoll. All I want is everything, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Enjoy those 70 vocal layers. It was 40, no, 56, 56 on that well, track. But I stand corrected. But, you know, this is good because you record me doing guitar and let's say I've quad-tracked guitars yep. for the rhythm part. So there's, and let's say, you know, for the sake of argument, we also cut a DI yep. for all of them. So there's eight tracks. Yep. And you've got to go in and you've got to, like, do your thing with it. You're going to have to edit it. You're going to have to clean it up. You're going to have to do all those things that you do on a recording and there's eight tracks. So mm -hmm. you're telling me that a folder, you assign that to a folder and you can group it as well. I guess And it so. just becomes a thing. Yeah, which makes a lot more sense for workflow reasons. Like if you've got a, a track with, I mean, even just to be able to like compress your, your drums down visually, I, I don't know about other people. I just, I don't like to have a session that's massively cluttered up with tracks because I I just can't find track. I want, I try to get things as quickly as possible. You know, when you program um, drums yes. for, for something and you've got, a drum track? Yes. You could do that, but with real drums. Pretty much, yeah. And it just it just squashes it down. I mean, obviously, some you've got to expand them out, particularly with maybe a drum recording, you want to turn your snare up or whatever. And that's fine. Like, And I don't know. I haven't seen any videos. I haven't seen how it's going to get implemented. Yeah. But even from just an editing perspective, being able to clean up your edit window, that might be pretty great. I mean, I said before, I like to commit to a guitar sound if I've got three mics because, as Leon said, if you've got three mics on something and a DI as well, then there's four, four tracks in Pro Tools for one guitar part. If you're going to quad track that, then you're up to 16. And that takes up a lot of screen real estate. I got two Ravens back there. They are 22 or 24 tracks wide each one. So that might just be only my rhythm tracks. And yeah. you've got to keep scrolling, scrolling. I just think it's kind of shitty. So no one's got time for that. I ain't got no time for that. So this is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's cool. I'm uh, on the Pro Tools subscription plan, whatever. You know, people have their opinions about Pro Tools, but uh, it's easy for me and the fact that I'll get that, I'm sure it's going to be pretty handy. Yeah, I mean, there's... Same with UAD. It's like, it's easy for me. I don't want to think about this stuff. Yeah, just use what you I got. I just want it to work. Yeah. The, 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 um, the UAD thing that I guess for me is not as attractive is I'm, I've been using Pro Tools for 15, 16 years. So I know that very, very inside out. And I guess that's the, the least attractive part is if it is a, its own DAW, then I have to I would have to learn that again. Yeah. I don't know how uh, useful that's going to be for me personally, but it might be, be cool for some people. Might be cool. Might be cool if you take your laptop home. Yeah. You maybe know? I'll just try it out and it'll be fantastic. Hey, try Kudos. it out. Try, try it out. out. Uh, speaking of interfaces, there's been lots yeah. of very attractive budget interfaces and non-budget interfaces. And I'm sure... A lot of people watching this who want to get into recording guitar, for example, one of my students yesterday was saying, what should I get? I want to record guitar. And it's like, my immediate thing is to say, get a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. And my students as well, I you always know, tell them the same thing. The Scarlett's are great, uh, but, they're reliable. 
But Solid state logic. Sell. So they've released some budget interfaces that are pretty well priced. and they, They're really cheap. They look really good. 229 US, I think, is the cheaper one, and 279 is the plus version with an extra headphone out on it. I mean, if you're into gear, you could just buy that and say you've got an SSL. True. For not much money. I had to drop seven or eight thousand dollars Australian on a piece of gear to say I own an SSL for a fucking Sigma, which is also very, very good. Very good piece of gear. But, but yeah. yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, Apogee, the Symphony USB. Yes. So that's the sort of most, I mean, that's around the thousand dollar mark or something like that. Yeah, there's like a new one of those. That's pretty cool. But um, it's kind of like they have their Symphony line of interfaces, which are pretty acclaimed and they've yep. got the, what is it, like the duet, the little ones. Yep. I remember when I was like, okay, I want to get into home recording a bit more. This was years ago. You yep. were like, get a duet. Yeah, I have one for and probably at the same time. I used a duet for years, for probably like four or five years before I got my uh, Apollo. And it's great. Because honestly, for most people, you just need a couple of inputs and a monitor controller, and that's fine. And the Apogee, the brand name precedes itself. Yeah. Uh, really, you just need something that's going to not make it sound worse. And I think at the time, and I'm talking like, you know, the late 2000s, early 2010s, the gear wasn't quite up to yeah. the, the standard that is now. I mean, see, unfortunately, pretty much any brand can put out a device yeah. like an SS, like SSL putting out an interface for that much. That's money. awesome. What's that Australian like three fifty four hundred yeah. bucks or something like that? Not much, much, not much more than a Scarlet or something like that. Yeah. You know? And if you're into guitars and you want that kind of thing, and it's obviously got the like it, it kind of looks more like a console. Yeah. Which is exciting as well. It doesn't look like this weird alien thing. I know a lot of people are like, what do I do with an interface? Or, yep. you know, when I review a plugin or something, I always get, how do I use this? Yeah. It's like you need an interface. It's like, how do I use that? Is it good? So that's exciting from SSL. Yeah. And um, hopefully the, the, you know, this is like one of those, the mouth feel of equipment, just like when you turn the a knob. The mouth feel, yeah, Yeah, exactly. you turn a knob and like, is it, is it going to feel solid? I, I do imagine that the stuff they put out will feel solid and and reliable which is um, what you want you don't want that like you know a behringer mixer 10 years ago they yeah, yeah. scratchy pots we've like, all we've all been there even the m audio interfaces and that oh thing, god a couple of years ago they're fine like they're functional but speaking of that uh avid have uh their matrix system yes. which i don't know how much it's going to cost but oh it's a lot they have yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be it'll be money but they have the rack mount what is it, a PCI card or... Oh, no, uh, the, you're thinking of the chassis thing. The yeah. chassis, they just, chassis uh, thing. So they, you can put a Mac Mini in it. Yeah, so, so it's a, an HDX Thunderbolt HDX. chassis. That's what that's the thing you're talking about. The Matrix is a little bit different. But so firstly, the, the Thunderbolt chassis. That's what I'm interested in. Forget about the Matrix. Yeah, People so, who are watching this aren't interested in that. Nah, fuck it. I'll talk about it. But yeah. the, uh, the Thunderbolt chassis is really cool because if you do want to run uh, an HDX system and you want to run a Mac Mini, then... I mean, the only way to do that is to get some sort of external three rack unit chassis for thousands of dollars. Yeah, put your put, mini in. You put your thing in. <laughs> you well, put it in a rack. Well, like no, the traditionally, like you're gonna get to, to get a PCI chassis that runs Thunderbolt is expensive. Like it's it was about twelve, or maybe it's I'm think, talking Australian dollars, about twelve fifteen hundred dollars, and that's just to put like a couple cards in. Um, you're already dropping like I think it's like six grand or something for an HDX card. So the whole barrier of entry is like very difficult yeah. but you know for most of us that a mac mini is enough now you can just buy the chassis to get a new mac mini uh one rack unit you chuck your mac mini in there you chuck your hdx card in there and bing bang boom and i think the rack mount version is like what 700 us that's which is cool. not not too bad that's really good um considering it's it's just it's all there and it's portable and it's done you it's, plug stuff in and it works which is yeah what we want and um, i think the other version the matrix Oh yeah, well, just quickly, there's oh, like yeah. the desktop, other desktop oh, version, yeah. which I think you don't put the Mac Mini in, but like it's a bit cheaper again. Yeah. So hey, it's a it's a really useful solution for what uh, what a lot of us kind of need these days. Um, yeah, quickly on the Matrix, so maybe you, your people here don't give so much of a shit about that. I I only fringe do because I'm always looking at Avid stuff because I'm a Avid Pro Tools user. We will talk about some gets more. We'll talk about some of the cool guitar stuff. Yeah, in a there's second, plenty of stuff. But the um the Matrix is the I guess it's the slightly smaller version of their flagship converters. So it's got the the DAD converters I think in them, which is really great. But that's a super expensive modular system. I'm not sure how much you know about it, but it's like the full the fully kitted out one. I think that's it was like burner. yeah, it's about like 17 grand US. Oh yeah. Or maybe maybe that's maybe it's a bit less than that. I could be wrong. But you put like individual cards in it depending on what you want. This one is just a, like a finished package and it's about five grand US. So oh, still super expensive. But, but not seventeen grand. No, and the way all this stuff integrates with the uh, um, like Yukon and with uh, 
like the latest version of the Pro Tools is really great. So with monitor controllers, that's a, a thing that really, again, it matters to me because I just like... Hey, it matters to me because, you know, I've got an Axe FX and I've got an Apollo and I had to find a workaround yeah. to... I basically use the Apollo as the interface and the monitor controller. Sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I don't want to turn my computer on to play guitar. It's really dumb. Like a lot, a lot of this stuff is, it should be quite easy. And the thing is, for what you're saying, you could theoretically get, like I got one on the ground there, like a hundred dollar Behringer desk. But oh, you don't, you, you don't want to be running like your $3,000 <laughs> Axe Effects into like a shitty Behringer desk to, to listen to. Like it's, or to monitor your mixes through. Yeah. Um, so like the weak, you're only as good as the weakest link kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, with this, with the monitoring section, the talk back, it's, it's, it seems pretty cool. Like it's all on, uh, we can't see the iPad app too. So uh, that, nice. that whole, the whole uh, ecosystem of it is really good. I do and, like that integration of Pro Tools with the iPad. It's yeah, really cool. It's, it's pretty rad. I do you enjoy know, that. Free iPad app and all that sort of thing. So anyway, it's Not cool. a free iPad, but a free iPad app. Transitioning quickly to guitar stuff and then we're going to get back to all of this cool things with recording uh neural quad cortex yep what do you reckon uh the amount of fucks i give is not <laughs> one half of of one uh no it's it's probably great but i don't care like I've, i'm using fractal stuff here's what i do leon which what you do like you to do? do tell me about your rig troy because you play on top of a stadium oh, i do you play get on paid top of stadium. money to do that and you do a lot of gigs so if anyone here can claim to be semi-pro it's you <laughs> A lot of semis in this studio, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I use the Axe 8. I've been using one of those for almost three years, actually, and it sounds great. Uh, I use a bunch of plugins because, honestly, depending on what you're doing half the time, like I've, I use this, a lot of Slate stuff, and the THU is really good in that. And apart from that, even 11's great. It's all fucking fine. Like, just twist some knobs and it'll be fine. And so the neural one looks great and there's some cool features on the interface like we were talking about the knobs with that you can turn. And like I mean the, the reality is, is they haven't, it's not fully cooked. Yet, no. You know what I mean? So the interface, the knobs. So yeah, it looks cool but like I just, it's just not for me because I associate, this is like generalization but the neural sound with like a lot of metal and modern metal stuff and I'm sure it won't just be that but the only, like the few clips I heard were mostly that sort of thing and again, there's only been a couple things. And that's great, but I can get those exact same sounds out of literally everything else I already have. So I'm not really that fussed about another box, like another DSP box that does it. Are you but a touchscreen guy? Do, do, those about, do you care about those things? No, I mean, the thing is on the Axe 8, like I've had to program that with the knobs and, and stuff sometimes. And I don't really find it that easy, but I also don't give a fuck. I'll just like load up the, I'll just make a sound in there in the computer do, 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 then go play a gig. I, I'm not, I'm like not that fussed about my guitar sound. It doesn't um, really matter that much as much as I spend talking about it. Um, you're you, good at it, like, and you're like you've delved well deep into it, into that. And that's but cool. even now, it's like the Axe FX three has authentic controls on it, and I use like those most of the time. Like a rock gig is like Atomica, cool, load yep. it up, put a cab. I probably turn the depth control down, and then a boost and a delay, and like that's yeah. the gig. I spend more time getting the bass sound for Ryan, you know, yeah. <laughs> where it's like, are you happy with this level? Uh, do you know how to use the tuner? Yep. You know, all this kind of stuff because we use the same unit. So it's it's making sure he's comfortable and yeah. then, you know, like I try to listen to the drums for the whole gig. Yeah, for me, I'm like just not chasing guitar sounds because I sort of know, like for, for my playing, I know what I like and I get it pretty quickly so I just play guitar. That's where I'm at. But that's not what everyone wants to do. Now with you know, that, I found it funny because that, I mean, the UI on it looks incredible, like unbelievable. They've basically gone, this is what everybody wants. Let's do it. There's the pod go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is the Let opposite of that. Yep. It's basically like set signal path. I think it's like 449 US dollars. That's great. Apparently, there's most of the Helix amps and effects in there. Built-in expression pedal, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, yeah, I don't really like that. That's the one thing I don't like about the Helix because it just adds to the size of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it'd be cool if they did that without the expression pedal. It'd be that's cool if they did a though. desktop version of it because yeah. in the shape of a pod, because, you know, just give us a pod that sounds sick. The pod sounds okay. Oh, um, hey, definitely just... Hey, Todd Rundgren still uses one. Does he? Yep. So <laughs> Is Billy Gibbons still using a JMP one? I don't know if he's still doing that. Probably. Like, yeah, like 12 sorry for a Sorry for a slight detour, but like him... Fucking the Iron Maiden guys were still using ADAs and stuff. Yep. And and the JMP ones, it's like there's a couple of people left doing it. But yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I found that interesting that you've got this 
seemingly state of the art thing and everybody went, ooh, Fractal Kemper Line 6, you's got owned. And then Line 6 was like, oi, bro, here is a Helix with none of the like fancy stuff. It's literally probably just going to be a pod that sounds sick. And then you've got the Fractal FM3, which I'm sure is probably going to come out at some point. People ask me, when's it coming out? I don't know. I don't work for them, but I want one. And it looks amazing. I literally ask him like every month. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that seems to hit the, it's the Axe FX front panel. And sure, you can only run one amp, but there's four channels. And, you know, it's designed to be gigged. Anyway, you know what looks insane? Oh, so hang on one really quickly. Yeah. Um, so the, the Cortex... What you're, what's your, like, give a fuck or not give a fuck? Look, I... Complete indifference? I'm complete, complete, complete indifference. I, complete I indifference. like gear. I think it'll be really good, and I think a lot of people really like it, and I think it might, if it gets people into the ecosystem of guitar modeling and not caring about, you know, carrying lots of gear, then it's a good thing. And if you want to use one and it makes you happy, do it. And um, who cares if it, what it sounds like compared to the pocket pod, compared to... You know, it's like there's so much splitting hairs. Just fucking play guitar. That's the Strymon thing looks cool just because it's so small. That new the Iridium, yeah. yeah. I know that didn't get announced like at NAMM, but... But that's... I mean, a lot of people were like, yeah, give me that. And the same kind of thing. A lot of people want the touchscreen and the Wi-Fi and the sick amps and stuff like that. So they'll see the Cortex and go, yeah, give me that. Same thing with the Podgo, same thing with the FM3. You know, if, if you have that feeling, lean into it, I say. Lean into it. All right, so that's a very, very brief detour through guitar stuff. Behringer have an SM57 clone. They sure do, Leon. Which, hey, everyone needs several SM57s. They do. You, you know, I got a bunch of them. You run a studio, you need them. If you're a home recording enthusiast, having an SM57 is a good thing as well because you can record your guitar amp with it. But the thing about this Behringer, what do they call it, the SP75? How is much SP? is it? Uh, it is, I think, $19 US. SL75, SL. $19. If it sounds half as good as a 57, buy 10. You know, and literally, you've got, you've got a lifetime supply of dynamic mics to use. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'll probably get one because I just end up having heaps of shit around, but... I've already got a bunch of 57s, so I don't probably need to buy well, any of these. Well, for someone watching this... I want a cheap interface and I want a microphone to record my guitar with and do clips. Get a little light, use your phone camera, get a Behringer SL75 <laughs> for $19 and um, I would say, make music. Honestly, the, the only thing against that is if you buy, these are, they are like a lot of Behringer equipment, which is, it's disposable. Yeah. Um, not everything that they make, make is like that, like the Clark Technic stuff's really cool. Um, but, you know, the little, we've talked about little Behringer desks they might be a hundred dollars and I've had lots of them. And when they die or parts of them die, you just throw them in the bin yeah. and you fix that stuff. And so you can't expect to get more than sort of a couple of years out of them. The same with these mics. Like I wouldn't be buying them thinking that like, I'm going to get the rest of my life out of it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas a 57, a 57, like people have ones from the eighties that still work fine. So yeah. if you want to think of it in terms of, they don't smell is, fine. They don't smell fine. But if you want to think of it in terms of like something you might keep for the rest of your life, then maybe that's, that's something to consider. So that was cool. Uh, I, look, I think that's good. I think it's the theme is kind of like accessibility. You know, you look at the, the pod go pretty accessible. Like that's probably going to be a lot of people's first modeler. Yeah. The quad cortex, that might be someone's do everything. The last modeler they buy. Yeah. Um, the SSL little interface, first interface, the, you know, the, UAD Luna might be your last thing or something like that. I'm so definitely going to buy an SSL interface, by the way. Like that's of all these things so far. Uh, that's definitely Yeah, I saw it and I was like, you know what? For a couple hundred bucks, I want one. I'll roll, roll the dice on yeah. that. I need another like portable thing anyway. So um, For guitar, we almost missed the Torpedo Captor X. Oh, yes. I had a Captor. Um, I got a Torpedo really Reload handy. over there. It's You've got great. a Reload. I still use it. I used it yesterday. But you can load IRs, stereo outs, headphones... You can load custom impulses. It looks like it's got a phone app. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, well, there's a there's a shot with someone using a phone app with a oh, photo okay. of it. So I don't know if that means it has a phone what app. What was the but, price on it? Do you remember? Uh, it is about, well, I'm trying to remember if it was 600 euro or 600 US dollars. So it's, it's pretty comparable though, I it's think. It's in between the live and the captor. Because what was the 
captor. That was like that was three hundred Australian dollars. Yes, yeah, so that's fuck that's all. That's a bargain. That's really really good. I think um their reactive load in it. Like I did super nerdy thing. I when the fractal load box came out, I bought that. And I compared them side by side and I liked the, just the way the response curve on the fractal one was, and it's switchable as well. Right. Um, boss do there was a true vamp expander, which has, I think 16 different combos of oh, okay. like, you know, uh, impedance curves yep. There's a sir stuff. So there's a lot of that kind of going around. This seems to just be a fixed impedance, but lots of IRs. So yeah. I said, I, I think they're really great. Um, I like the form factor of it too, because it sits on top of your ramp. Yeah, they're really, they're pretty small. Like you, if you can chuck one in a backpack and take it to a gig, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, having, cheaper than an ox as well. Yeah, I mean the ox, look, the ox looks great, yeah. but it's a bit pricey for me and what I need at the moment. And I think the live, how much is the live? I think it's about twelve hundred US. Oh, yeah, like, sorry, yeah. AU. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, which is I think it's oh maybe sixteen. I think it's about the same price as the reload. So yeah, if it, it's about half price, of, like between that. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Clark Technic. Yeah. They're doing a Dimension D clone. That sounds like something you would enjoy. That sounds like something I would really enjoy. That's your, Just, your favorite chorus, right? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I think it is. Because um, Boss did the DC2 oh, yeah, the reissue, pedal. and that sounded really good. Yep. I mean, I can get the same sound out of my Axe Effects really, really easily. There's three different Dimension modes in there, and they sound the same. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and Eventide just did their Triceracorus, which is a tri-chorus. The Axe Effects has a tri-chorus as well. I mean, it's, you know, they sound great, but, you know, I have a thing for Rack Gear as well, and they've, it looks like pretty much a one-to-one clone. Yeah. Like, you have four buttons, and it's, what, two rack spaces? Three uh, rack spaces? Yeah, something, something like silly. That. And, you know, all the Clark Technic stuff gets pretty good reviews, and... I've yeah. used the 1176 and the Pultec clone, and they're pretty good. Like, cool. um, yeah, and I've used a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of real 1176s and a bunch of Pultec clones as well. But the, it certainly stacks up with the other 1176s, I think. The Neve. This RMX is a really 16. interesting one. Yeah, the, yeah. I uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be chilling out for it, but yeah, the RMX 16, which uh, classic digital reverb unit, 80s reverb unit, the non lin uh, sound in that is all over the 80s and it's a 500 recordings. series yeah which is interesting cool. there's, there's um i'm surprised there hasn't been more reverbs and delays and stuff in 500 series I there's a few of them but there's not that many look consider. troy let's make a prediction for the <laughs> new decade a lot of 500 series verbs and delays and mods and you well, know well it's a it's a cool idea like if you've got a lunchbox full of like one of those and you've got your like i don't know lexicon pcm 42s or something like that not that they make that now but that'd be kind of cool if you could condense an entire rack's worth of 80s like cool units into a 500 series rack that'd be great i mean Um, that would be useful in a lot of like pro studios anyway because it's like that's desirable gear and there sounds people still want i think the only thing that's a bit odd for me and this is just my own workflow because i don't have a so i just kick shit you are bumping the camera sorry mate did i get it out did i fuck it no all right the uh am i still in shot do i still in the shot you still look great um yeah, because I'm not using a console. I'm using, I've got touchscreens back there and I do have a lot of external effects. Uh, lots and lot, like, fuck, you know how many, like, old reverb units and stuff I have. Yeah. I don't really use them to be complete. They sound really good, um, but I still find just plugins are way simpler when even using, doing something and going out of the box a lot. Um, plugins are a lot more simple, uh, lot uh, better in my workflow. And the RMX 16 UAD has got a version of that, yep. which sounds really good. I've demoed that. That sounds really good. They've got that modeled in the, what is it? The verb suite slate thing too, the Liquid Sonics one. And I use a lot of those sounds, the non-lin verbs. And yeah, I mean, if you've got a Brocasti, then I guess I think the non-lin sounds are in that too, but I, mean, I don't know. For like, it's like two grand US or something roughly, maybe a bit less. And that's the thing. I mean, yes, it's hardware, but you know, the, and this was a, like this, I think this, this will be a good way to kind of wrap up because the point of this was, I guess, to talk about, you know, if you're into guitar and home recording and all this music tech world, which is a big thing, much bigger than the world of kind of guitar pedals and modelers and the stuff I spend a lot of time talking about, but it's, and I've had this chat with Troy a few times where it's like, should I spend, you know, X thousands of dollars and get a lunchbox with say two mic pre's and you know maybe a couple of little like comps and things like that or should i just shell out and buy a uad and a couple of plugins 
it's kind of up to you, you know? Like, yeah. It's, um... Like, I did the UAD thing because it takes up less space. Yeah, and... And I, it sounds fine. And it's great. I, I said, I've... Because I'm in a bigger space now than I was a couple of years ago. I would needed more gear, and I just also like buying stuff but i like the way you said that i was in a bigger space so i needed more gear not well, i had more gear so i needed to up, upgrade my yeah space. pretty yeah pretty much that was kind of magic how that happened though yeah i mean i i record drums now at my studio whereas i wasn't doing that before yeah. i was always hiring different studios but in saying that i said i did lots and lots of vocal tracking using just uad stuff and i thought it sounded really yep. good um and at the end of the day i mean this could be antelope like whatever your yeah it doesn't is. matter like it's just it, it's all fine. People are putting out like good equipment now. Just fucking put a mic in your face and yell into it and you're probably going to get some good music. Or plug your guitar into a modeler. It's all fine. There's not, it's not as hard as it used to be. You remember what it was like years ago. Yeah. Trying to run fucking Amplitude in the mid 2000s even, like it just didn't work. I was trying to run Pro Tools with an Mbox. It sounded like garbage. You don't know, it's something my dad bought me a Line 6, what was it, the Tone Port? Oh yeah. Remember that thing? Yeah, someone was selling one the other day on Gumtree for like nothing. For Christmas one year. He spent like 700 bucks. Oh like, man. Yeah, it was a lot expensive. of money. I was like 15 or 16. I was so excited. I plugged into my computer and it just wouldn't work. Like obviously the computer probably wasn't up to spec. Yeah, just anything USB was like... Ooh, it's yeah, and, it just, and stuff. it just didn't work. And I was so disappointed. And he saw I was so disappointed. So he took it back. And you know what he bought me with the residual money... Zoom like 707? Uh, not a Zoom 707, a Boss 10-band graphic EQ. Oh, that's cool. And a... Oh, what was the company called before Line 6 bought them? You um, something... It was a guitar wireless. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah. The, it was X2 or something? X2, yeah. yeah. So I was the only kid on the block with a wireless and I was that dork with a graphic EQ and not a distortion pedal. And little did I realize at the time how much of a good idea it is to give your son a graphic EQ. Which graphic EQ did you have? Uh, the Boss GE20. Still got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, another one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was... Uh, you well used on... that when we started playing together yep. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. it's like, I just wanted a Boss DS1. And he was like, you don't want a Boss DS1. You think you want a Boss DS1? And that's like a good lesson for all of this because you think you want the newest, coolest thing. Like, and you know, even saying this, I do lots of videos obviously with the Axe Effects stuff, you think you want an Axe Effects 3, maybe you don't. Maybe you want like a Marshall DSL and a 2x12 cab and yeah. a clip-on tuner. Maybe that will keep you happy. Yeah. You know what? Like, um, I'll just sort of dovetail into that. Oh, by the way, I did get a DS1 when I was the same age as Leon's talking right now. Um, Ridiculous. Didn't work. It was not the right. <laughs> not, I mean, it worked, but it wasn't the sound for me. Um, when I was at NAMM last, you know what I was more interested in than anything else? And I'm still more interested in when I'm looking through gear slots and everything is because I have so much stuff now. Like I have mic preamps, compressors, outboard gear, microphones, speakers, blah, blah, blah. You know what is so important is how the fuck you connect all these things together. Oh, yes. And I'm not talking about just cables. I'm talking about like racks and I guess cables, like, but boxes just to split sounds out and patch bays and stuff like these are the things that make life easy. The the mic pre itself is going to sound great and it's going to be really useful. But how, like, if it's a 500 series thing, what rack are you going to put in? What outputs has it got? Um, how is that going to integrate? Does it have DB25s? Can you integrate that into your uh, uh, interface? Hey, you're stuff? using a guitar modeler. How are you going to amplify it? How are you going to monitor yourself? Exactly. What what you, guitar are you going to plug into it? What music are you going to play through it? How are you going to get that modeler to the gig? Are you going to take it in a pedal board? Are you going to throw in a backpack? Like yep. these are things that make a difference to my life. They make a difference to my life. Yeah. And like you got that cool Nuex um, pedal board, right? For your, yep. yeah. And that thing looks wicked. Um, yeah. That's, that's actually amazing because it fits the FC6 and an expression pedal. Yeah. On. So take the FC6 off, put an FM3 on. There's my rig. But like all that sort of stuff, like when I was wandering around, NAM, wandering around NAM last year, that's the sort of stuff that I was interested in because again, I've got most of the gear and that's all cool. But like, how do I make, how do you integrate that into if you're a professional, your workflow to make it all work. Or even if you're just someone who works a nine to five and you come home, you know, and you make dinner for your kids and you put them to bed and it's 10 o'clock and you have two hours to play some guitar and you want to record some ideas you've had in your head. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is to spend 90 minutes of that figuring out how to plug something in, turning knobs. I know or plenty of people like that. They just want to plug in and have a nice guitar sound. Yeah. And they want a drum plug-in that sounds nice 
and they want to be able to record stuff or they want to play over backing tracks and oh, that's it. Yeah. Just go to bed at midnight, wake up, do the nine to five, rinse and repeat, you know, that time for all of us. And we all have this where it's like, you know, sometimes you just pick up a guitar and you just want to play it. Yeah. That's um, something that I don't get as much time to do anymore because I've got too much shit, like other people's shit I need to work on. But yeah, it's true. It's um, whenever he finishes that album. Hey. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of stuff. I mean, that's why I guess we're harping on, uh, particularly me, I'm harping on about how much I love the UAD stuff and all that. I mean, it's not that I use it as much as I used to, but it is super great. Um, yeah. And it's all fine. All this stuff's fine. Just what's the easiest thing that works for you? Yeah. And there's never been more options. So that's a hard thing. And that's, I guess, why we're here to get hyped about stuff. And these are Fucking the things- Fucking pumped, that- man. Yeah, man. With a chest bump. Should we do it outside? Yeah, we'll drop it in later. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was legible in some way. Friday Q&A will be back next Friday. Uh, Troy, where can people find you? And where can they listen to you? You have a podcast. Oh yeah, you, I could pump the podcast. Liam was on it. That sucks on the Handshake Media Network. You can check that out. It's got a yellow logo. Um, I'm at Hammerspace Recording Studios. That's where we are sitting right now. You can find it on the internet, but you just look me up. Troy Nappaban. Nappaban? Nappaban. Troy Nappaban. Nappaban. I'll write it in the, in on, the description. Uh, thanks. On Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. So yeah, if you want yeah. me to mix your shit, one of those. Do it. Sounds good. I need to get him to mix some of our stuff and uh, release it at some point. Because got to finish recording some of it. Hey, hey, and uh, yeah. Anyway, go listen to King's X. We'll see you next time. And we are.